all you cool cats and kittens, happy Thursday. And I legit cannot say that with a straight face. So yeah, I feel like this might be the last time that I open with that because I feel like otherwise it will get annoying really quick. Um, but yeah, hi, hopefully I haven't lost you. This is the second video for the week. So if you haven't already watched the design with me, go watch it. Um, like I said in that video, I feel kind of bad because I haven't posted in a while and now I'm coming back with two videos about shop releases, but I like to do videos for shop releases. When I don't do them, I get requests for videos for these types of releases, so I'm doing it. Anyway, hopefully I will be back soon with like regular content. Maybe I will start reading again. Maybe I will suddenly just have like epiphanies of videos I can do about all of the Marvel movies I've been watching and all of the DC stuff I've been consuming because my superhero phase is still going strong. So that said, there's a comic inspired kit in the shop. Go check it out. It's called Be Your Own Hero and I love it and I might reuse it in my planner for the third time. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today we are talking about the summer reading challenges because they are going to be in the shop tomorrow. So set an alarm tomorrow 10 a.m central standard time the summer reading challenges will be in the shop we are doing seasonal reading challenges this year in the creating and co book club like our readathons it's completely free to participate in these challenges um i do put a picture in a blog post which i will leave linked down below um, on the website you can just like save to your computer and then print if you want to um but like all things that are reading and bookish related and creating in co-world, we have a line of planner stuff that is also coming to the shop. So I figured I would kind of go over the challenges a little bit and then I would show you guys some of the stuff that's coming to the shop because there are some new pretty exciting things. So yeah, seasonal reading challenges. They're designed to last for three months or a quarter of the year. Our first ones were the spring reading challenges. They are still in the shop because spring is still here, um, but we release stuff like hopefully up to two months early. So that's why summer is already coming to the shop. Um, so yeah, I will leave the spring blog post and the stuff, all of that, whatever, link down below. Anyway, like I said, we started with spring. Spring was designed to run from March, April, and May, and summer is designed to run for June, July, and August. This is kind of a self-start reading challenge, so really you can start it whenever feels right to you. If you decide that summer is May 20th, I'm not going to come and tell you it's not, because if you're out of school or work or whatever and you want to start this challenge, go for it. Um, but we do chat in the book club and stuff about different book ideas. I always put up a post for um, people to kind of like recommend their favorite books for the different prompts to give you ideas and things like that. So the book club is linked down below. There will just be a description box full of links. Sorry about that in advance. Anyway, so our seasonal reading challenges have 15 reading prompts. We design them in a way to kind of like make you think a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but also enough that if you are just like die hard for one genre and that's really all you read, like you should be able to fit a lot of books from multiple genres into these prompts. So this whole thing with the reading challenges is meant to be fun and not stressful. So yeah, like with the readathons, I'm not going to police you. If you say a book fits this prompt, I'm just going to believe you because I'm not going to look into it. So yeah. Anyway, the challenges always come with 15 prompts, like I said, and we release different stickers for them that are basically bookshelves. And as you read, you fill in your bookshelf and it's a lot of fun. By the end of the challenge, you have this really pretty bookshelf and you have all these books you've read. And it's just really nice to look at that in your planner. So we have a bunch of different sticker sizes and all of that. So I will show you guys that stuff at the end of the video. Also, I am doing something really exciting that I have never done before, but you guys in the Facebook group are really excited. So I hope you are not disappointed. Um, but we are doing a kids version and a teen version this time as well. Um, I figured it might be something fun to do if you are stuck at home 
with your kids while all of this crazy virus stuff is going on. And I know a lot of our people in the book club have kids that are interested in planning and have their own planners and they always want to like do stuff with mom and things like that or dad or whoever is doing it. And so I thought it would be fun to try out doing a kids version and a teen version as well. Both of them only have 10 prompts, but we are also going to release a like year long version for those age groups that have 15 prompts. So like on Friday you can potentially pick up 25 reading prompts or whatever. Um, and the kid versions are also going to have books that they can fill in um, and put a sticker over each book as they complete it. Um, so yeah, we are only releasing the kids and the teens in our largest size because I felt like you can make it work for most planners that kids are probably using and it would also be a good size to like put on the fridge or a bulletin board or something like that. Um, and I also made the books a little bit larger as well so that, you know, especially for the kids, like tiny hands can do it. So I'm really excited. I hope you guys liked it. I checked with a few friends and customers with the reading prompts for those to try to make them as age appropriate as possible in terms of like reading level. So just as like a quick mention i feel like the kids version would be really good for like elementary school kids um and then the teen version would be really good for like middle school kids um and maybe like a fifth grader if they really love reading or a fourth grader you know your kids capabilities so just check out the prompts before you pick it up and you know see if they would end up loving those prompts um, and then if you have like a high school kid or maybe somebody who is like really into reading in middle school or elementary or whatever, then they can just use the regular challenge that we're about to talk about all of the prompts. All right, so like I said, for all of our reading challenges, we like to make the prompts as easily accessible as possible. So no matter what you like to read, you can do the challenge and have fun with us. So whether you like to read comics, or all romance or all thrillers or all fantasy or whatever you like to read. Hopefully you will be able to make this work for you. So yeah, without further ado, I am going to go ahead and run through the summer prompts and just kind of like give an explanation, but like read it and interpret it how you want to. Okay. So the summer challenge, especially I tried to make it very relaxing and easy to pick books for because I feel like we're all stressed about a lot of things these days and a challenge, a reading challenge is not the thing to add stress for. So yeah, I wonder how many more times I can emphasize that this is not meant to be stressful. Anyway, getting into the prompts, the first one is travel. So somehow, some way, travel is involved in the book. Um, the second one is under 500 pages. That's another one that is pretty self-explanatory. The next one is a book that you are excited to read. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter why you're excited. You're just excited. The fourth one is featured on a list. So I specifically did not sp like specify a list because I don't really care what list you pull from. You can pull from a Goodreads list. You can pull from a list of fantasy romances that you have to read. I don't care what list it is. Just something that was recommended on a list on the internet. The next one is an adventure. This could be any type of adventure. Most books have a character going on some form of an adventure, so I feel like this one should be pretty easy to fill as well. The sixth one is Whirlwind Romance. So I want something that, you know, just like makes your heart clench in happiness because the characters are just so adorable. Um, the next one is a twist ending. So I feel like this one was kind of a nod to my thriller fans out there. But obviously, if you don't like reading thrillers, you can find something else that has a twist ending. The best way to get a recommendation for this, I feel like, would be to Google um, a like twist ending type of read, just like Google books with twist endings or ask in the Creating and Co book club group. You can just go in there and, and like post a request. You don't have to like go on a certain thread or anything. I will, like I mentioned, post a specific post for recommendations, but you don't have to specifically ask on that post because I always pin this post in the announcements of the group and I feel like with some, sometimes with Facebook, you don't see the announcements first, which is so stupid. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are the ways I feel like would be the best way to get a recommendation for this prompt. 
The next one is a cover buy. So you don't necessarily have to buy this book, but it's a book that you purely want to read because of the cover. So whether you went and you bought it because of the cover or you're at the library or at the library's website these days, you're on the library's website and you see a cover and you're like, I want to read that or you see it in a Facebook group and you want to read it. However, you want to acquire your book. You don't actually have to buy anything. The next one is recommended by a friend. So grab your bookish friend and ask them for a recommendation. Or if you want to post in the Facebook group, once again, you can. You don't have to specifically wait for me to make a post or anything like that. The next one is published in June, July, or August. This is a similar prompt to one that was in the spring challenge, but obviously different months. So I think this is going to be like the one challenge that is in every seasonal reading challenge. It doesn't have to be this June, July, or August. It could be last June, July, or August, but something that was published over the summer. The 11th prompt is a sequel. So self-explanatory there. The 12th one is diversity. So this could be diversity of really any kind. It could be neurodiverse characters, um, representation for a certain illness or a marginalized persons or racially diverse characters. However you want to take that, but read a book with people that are different from you. The next 13th prompt is bright colors. So this one is left kind of ambiguous on purpose. I am personally taking it as the cover is really bright, but it could be like bright is in the title or the title is really bright or something like that. The 14th one is just because. So a book that you just pick up and you want to read it just because it wasn't in your plans. Don't plan for this one. Just when you're ready to fill this prompt or when you read a book that you just read that didn't really fit anything else, you just felt like reading it, that's the book that you put in this one. And the 15th one has a map. So I put this one because it seems like we are not going to be traveling that much this year. So yeah, our characters can travel for us and there's a map in the book to help them do that. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the prompts for the summer challenge. Like I said, there is a kids version and a teen version. I don't think I'm going to go over all of those because I feel like that would be like a really long and boring video. But if you have any questions, there is going to be pictures in the blog post. Obviously you'll be able to see all of the prompts before you purchase them in the listings. Um, and I will also include the little like table where you can like write in the book next to the prompt as a download in the blog post. My point is you will have a lot of access to these prompts before you actually purchase them. So if you have any questions about it, like email me at creatingco at gmail.com or you just can just like ask in the Facebook group and I will answer you or someone will answer you. I will say that blog comments are not a good way to get in contact or you can comment on this video for that matter but comments on the blog post are not a good way to get in contact because i don't think it alerts you when i reply back which is really annoying um but anyway as far as books you can do one book per prompt you can make a book count for multiple prompts however you want to do it if you are doing the year-long challenge you can have books on both challenges if you want to or if you for one we will be doing a readathon in june spoiler alert so during that readathon you can have books count for the readathon and this challenge however you want to do it because everyone reads a different amount of books over the years and like i said we don't want this to be stressful. We want this to be fun. So however you need to make it fun. All of that being said, I am going to take you over to my desk so that I can show you guys the like different sizes and the washi tape that is coming to the shop and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, let's go take a look at that. All right, guys, I have a lot to show you. So buckle in or go grab a snack. If you haven't already, hit pause. I'll be here when you come back. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into all of the things that I have to show you with this free printable stay home and read reading challenge. So I didn't mention this in the first half of the video because I filmed that part of the video 
yesterday and then late last night I had the idea for this and I wanted to go ahead and get it up for Friday because I'm already putting up a whole bunch of stuff so I might as well include this as well especially since it's a free printable so basically I came up with 12 different reading prompts that I kind of feel like go along with what a lot of us have been feeling like reading lately. I also tried to design them so that you could do this with your kids if you wanted to. I tried to make it so that it would be as accessible or as applicable to as many people as possible. But basically my thought process with this challenge is that you print it out in whatever size you want. I printed it as a full image on this sheet of paper, but you can print it whatever size you want to. Just drop it in whatever program you're comfortable in and resize it. Um, but as you read the different reading prompts, you just color in the book as you complete them. So I feel like it might be fun for kids because it kind of gives them something to color. I left it as bare as possible so that you can color it yourself or your kids could color it or whatever. So I don't know. I just felt like this would kind of be something fun to kind of put up on the website that we can all do together. It's kind of unplanned. I don't have any like start times or anything. This is purely just how you want to do it. Um, but if you do it, I hope you will take a picture and post it in the Facebook group, which is Creating and Co Book Club, because I would love to see um, like how you color it and if you add any like decorations or anything like that. I would just really love to see all of that. So yeah this is gonna be up on the website i might go ahead and list it now so it might be up when the video is live um if it is i'll leave a link down below if it doesn't go up when the video goes live it will be um up on friday at 10 a.m central standard time and yeah we can all get to reading so that being said i am gonna jump into all of the summer reading stuff which is what this video has been about so let's get into the, all of that. All right, so the first thing that I want to show you is actually the reading challenge itself. So we always release a size that is about six and a half by eight and a half. So it's perfect for like seven by nine planners or even larger if you want to. Um, and yeah, so we have this size. It'll go in the classic Erin Condren, the classic Happy Planner, yellow paper house. I'm pretty sure it fits into the um, popular reading planners that are out there. I don't know. If your planner is seven by nine or larger, it will fit in here. So basically it comes as a giant sticker. You can lay it down or you could leave it separated if you want. And then it also comes with this set of books and like these little like deco pieces that you can lay on top of the books as you complete the challenge. So eventually it will be a full color bookshelf. And then, so this is the like regular edition reading challenge. So this is for, I would say like high school age and older, maybe middle school. I don't, like I said in the beginning, you know your kid's reading level anyway. So then we also have the kid and teen editions this time, which I am honestly really nervous about. So you guys are definitely gonna have to let me know what you think of them because I think it's just because I don't have kids myself, even though I checked with multiple people about the prompts anyway. So this is how all of the prompts or the challenges of this size will come. It will actually come so that it can be folded. So that way, if you are doing this with your kids or doing it with yourself or whatever, and you don't actually want to stick it in a planner, then you could put it on the fridge or whatever. So like this obviously like right now is not a sticker. So you don't have to actually stick it down in your planner. So it just has a little perforated line in the middle and I will send it to you folded in on itself like this so it's kind of like a little booklet anyway the kids version has two sheets to it because I wanted the books to be pretty large and then I also made the table a little bit wider or like the boxes are a little bit taller so that the kids can actually write in the books that they read and then of course it comes with the books so that your kids can put the book stickers on top of the books as they complete the challenge 
so we have that one and then of course like I said we have the teen version the teen version is really similar to the regular edition the books are just a little bit bigger and for both of the um, kids and the teen edition there is only 10 prompts whereas the regular edition has 15 prompts so yeah and then like I said it comes with these little books so they can cover the books as they complete it and I actually really like how this layout turned out so you might see this in future editions anyway so these are the seven by nine editions of the summer reading challenge I've also had a lot of requests to do a printable version so I think I have kind of come up with a good printable version option that kind of goes off the concept of the stay home and read challenge a little bit. So similar to that, I'm going to do a printable image that you can download and print yourself. I printed this as an 8x10 picture no real reason why that's just the size that i decided to do it in um and similar to the stay home and read one as you complete the challenges you can just color in the books however you want and then this also has the table so that you can write in the books that you read and just like this one you can resize it however you want i made it so that it would be eight by ten but then you could also size it down you should also be able to size it up slightly as well um but you might start to lose resolution if you're trying to like make it a poster or something so yeah we will have a printable version this time I don't know if we'll keep the printable version um I just really wanted to do it for this challenge especially because I know that some people aren't getting mail right now and things like that so I didn't want people to be excluded from the challenge so we have those. I'm going to go ahead and show you the other sizes of the summer reading challenge and then I'll go over more of the other stickers. That way, I don't know. I'm just trying to make this as like organized as possible, but it's kind of all over the place. We also have a Hobo Weeks or Print Pression Weeks. This is actually a Print Pression Weeks. Anyway, we have that size as well and we have the same concept as the larger one. It's just a lot smaller obviously and it gives you a little bit of a sneak peek of some washi because you will have some room to kind of like put washi around the sticker if you want to in the hobo weeks you also in the classic or larger size happy planners obviously with the seven by nine you'll have a little bit of room as well anyway that's a tangent um so yeah we have the sticker that will come as kind of like a dashboard card so you don't actually have to stick it down if you don't want to and then we have the little books that go along with it as well so if you don't want to stick it in your planner obviously you can just kind of like tuck it in the back or however you want to do it so we have that size and then we have a few other sizes as well so they are all kind of in the same planner. So we have the first one that is a dashboard card, just like the Hobo Weeks size one. And what I mean by that is when you get it, it'll just be a card. It won't have like extra paper around it as most sticker sheets do. That way, like I said, you don't have to stick it down in your planner if you don't want to. But I did just stick it down in this planner because, you know, I just thought it might look nice for the video. So yeah, you get a lo another little sneak peek of the matching washi tape. Anyway, the dashboard card will come with the card and the book stickers as well. And then we also have a couple of like what I call bullet journal versions. So what I mean by that is every element is a separate piece and it's not it's like stuck in a background like the cards are. So you'll get like the header sticker, you'll get the bookshelf which is separate, and then you'll get the table which is also separate. We have that in two sizes. This is the larger size so it's good for like a bullet journal type of size and it comes as one sticker, or no, it comes with as two sticker sheets because you have the first one with the books and the bookshelf and the deco and then we also send the table along as well 
I will say that I designed these so that the books can actually go longer. So for example, for this planner, um, I cut off like edges of the bookshelf just so it would actually fit a little bit better because obviously if you wanted to use this in a regular Erin Condren or whatever you still could um, and then we also have a smaller size which I used in a like mini happy planner type of size so once again it's the same concept all of the elements are separated you do get two of the header stickers just because there was room and I figured if you do want to separate it onto two pages however you want to do it once again I do have the shelf set up so that you could cut off the edge if you need to and yeah it just comes as just like this this one also comes with the table it's just a little bit bigger than this table obviously so that is it for the actual summer reading challenges but I still have a lot to show you so don't go anywhere the first thing I'm going to show you are the kids and teen year-long challenges so obviously I'm releasing this in April so it's four months into the year I didn't want it to be super stressful so I made it so that they have 15 prompts a piece um, and obviously like it's your kids schedule so like if you want to let them have until next April it's totally fine these are all kind of meant to be self start so yeah anyway so we have the kids with 15 challenges. We have the books that they can use to cover the books as they read them. And then we have the second page, which has the table. This one, because there's 15, isn't quite as tall of boxes as the other, as the summer challenges, but I made it work as best as I could. And then once again, these will come folded in on themselves. So you don't have to stick them down in a planner. You can use them however you want. Stick them on the fridge, stick them on a bulletin board. And then the teen version is the exact same thing. It's kind of more similar to the summer challenge in that there's the books up here and then there is the reading prompts down here. There are 15 reading prompts in this challenge as well. And like I mentioned at the start of the video, I did try to make them as age appropriate as I could. And I checked in with friends that do have kids that can kind of like confirm for me that these are all good um so yeah i hope you guys like the challenges and i hope your kids like the challenges i'm really nervous about the kids liking them i hope they like them and don't feel like it's homework um anyway so now that we are done showing you the challenges i have some other fun things to show you so for all of our seasonal reading challenges, we do a weekly kit, which is just kind of a fun kit. I don't really have a specific week planned to use this kit, but you know, you could use it the week you start or the week you finish the reading challenge, or you could just read, like use it at some point in the season that you're doing it. I just kind of like enjoy making seasonal reading kits. So yeah, here's the summer one. I absolutely love it. I tried to make it as, um, like applicable to as many situations as possible because for one we don't know what the summer is gonna bring and for two obviously some of us hang out at a pool all summer some of us hang out at the beach and some of us just hang out at home so I tried to have full boxes that kind of covered all those situations but I think it'll be really fun to have in your planner so our base kit comes with four kit sheets I'm just gonna kind of like flip through them really fast because I don't want to make this video three hours long. Um, and then we also have a bunch of add-ons. So I'm not going to go through all of the add-ons. There's four or five options. Um, but I did want to mention that starting a couple of months ago, we did start doing a reading add-on for our kits. So it's really just a bunch of kind of like reading themed stickers that you might need more of in a week if you are a really big reader. So yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that while I was here. We also have a horizontal Erin Condren format, which I didn't print out and sh because it's been the same for years. Um, but we also have some a couple of like newer formats that I figured I would show you guys because I had some time to put together a mock layout. So the first one is the half kit. It's kind of the same as the base kit, except it's two pages instead of four. So it's just a little bit more applicable for some of the like smaller planners like B6 or 
the print pression weeks most of our customers have been using the half kit in the print pression weeks so i kind of made a little bit of a mock layout to show you and then we also started doing these stickers that i call outside of the box stickers and i started doing them for all of the exclusive themes in our shop so yeah this is one of our exclusive themes for the shop and they are stickers that have the full box design but they have rough edges so if you are a bullet journaler so if you are a bullet journaler or you just don't like using boxes for whatever reason like i feel like it looks really cute i put it down in this print pression weeks and i think it's really cute as is um without the like even though this is kind of more of a boxy style traditional planner so i started making these i love them you guys have really been loving them and don't worry the wheels are turning in my brain around this so yeah i'm still going to be keeping these but we might kind of expand the selection or something coming up and then i also wanted to mention we started doing an anti kit we actually started doing this kit last year but i still think of it as new and i try to tell people about it because i feel like i don't advertise it enough so i figured i would throw it in this video so basically this is perfect for a bullet journaler or somebody who doesn't use um, weekly kits very often but sometimes you just kind of like want something extra special for your week so it has a couple of strips that are kind of like washi style strips we have a couple of full boxes I'm actually thinking about changing these out for these that's one of the wheels that are turning. So I haven't made that decision yet. We have some other like little just like bookish like washi style little st strips here. We have some deco and then we have some script stickers that are just like the days of the week and then a little to do. So I actually did a mock layout for this and I kind of just made it as if I was doing like a week on one page in my bullet journal. So I used, I don't know where the sticker sheet is that I actually used, ended up. I'm not going to dig for it. Obviously I used all the script stickers. I used the two washi strips. I used the full boxes. Um, and then I used some of the deco. And then I feel like as the week went on, if I was to plan in this, I would use more of the deco to kind of fill in around the pin marks. So yeah, there's that. And then we also have a monthly kit. So let me show you that real quick. And then I promise I'm going to show you guys the functional stuff because it's really fun. So we have a monthly kit and this is another one. I can't find the sticker sheets that I used for it, but our monthly kits this year are two sheets and it comes with the headers. It comes with all of the numbers and the days of the week that you can actually like move around yourself so you could do a sunday or a monday start it comes with these stickers that can cover the days that aren't in the month and then it comes with this little sidebar and then we also have a sheet that is an add-on so you can add on a bunch of labels we actually made our labels this year one and a half inches so they don't actually cover they don't actually stretch across the entire monthly box, which I actually really like the look of. Um, but we did that because most weekly planners are one and a half inches on their actual weeks. So you could use this like throughout your planner. So yeah, that's why we did that. Anyway, it's an add-on option. We have a bunch of different options for monthly kits. We have an Erin Condren, a Happy Planner, um, a Hobo weeks one which i actually did end up laying out in this print pression weeks um and then we have an any planner version which is kind of similar to the anti kit and then it's kind of like for like bullet journalers um but i didn't print that one out anyway now we can get into some of the fun functional stuff that we are going to be releasing and then i will let you guys go because We've been chatting for a while. So actually, before I show you the functional stuff, I'm going to go ahead and show you the washi set. So you've seen a bunch of sneaks. So I almost like didn't show you this at all. But basically, our washi sets come in a little set. So you get this thicker washi and then you get the skinnier washi and the washi on the wider roll is a bookshelf 
with some like little decorations and whatnot on it. And then the thinner roll are just some like little like floating book designs and obviously it's a solid background so we've been doing these for each of our seasonal releases this year i actually already have some of the other ones and i'm excited about them they turned out really well um and we've been doing them for a couple of other like special events this year so yeah back to functional stuff i laid out a bunch of the functional stuff in this print pression weeks because I felt like that would be the best way to show you a lot of the functional stuff that we bring to the shop um, for the seasonal stuff is like seasonal recolors of our normal reading sticker line so we have I'd rather be reading charge e-reader we have a bunch of different reading icon options we have these little book progress labels so you can kind of like fill in as you read your book we have book releases we have these little shelf stickers that are just great for deco we have readathon stickers we have some exo characters um I am including some quarter boxes in the recolors we have book hangover some like little book emojis so you can put in like how you feel about the book. We also have these little books to read um, checklist boxes that I'm bringing out in the summer colors and then we have these like little floating book headers that look a lot like the washi but obviously they're stickers um, and then because I didn't print and cut all of them I just kind of like printed a bunch of different ones to put in mock layouts we also have finished reading and started reading reading sprints pages read buy books DNF library run Sorry, I'm booked. We have these little book stacks that have books to read across the top. Some more reading exos. We have some more book emojis. So yeah, we just have a bunch of different functional reading stuff that I wanted to let you guys know about. But then, finally, the last thing I'm going to show you guys are some brand new functional stuff that we are bringing to the shop. So, the first thing I'm going to show you are this little stack right here. So I asked in the group if there were any reading stickers that people were missing because obviously we have a pretty large line already. Um, and I had a request to do some little exos reading to like a smaller exo so you can use it for when you're reading to your kids or your kids are reading to you or whatever. And I think it's so cute because there's this little book stack and then the kid exo is on top. And I just think it's adorable. This is totally not related to reading, but I figured I'd toss it into the video. Um, I needed some stationary bike exos, and so I had those done. And we're releasing them on Friday. It's the only workout-related thing, I swear. <laughs> and then I have some kind of like new quote sheets, because I haven't done new quote sheets in forever. And they're pretty popular. And we have like eight of them in the shop right now but we're doing another one that is bookish related so we have just a bunch of different quotes i sized them all so that they could go on a regular like weekly thing so they're all about one and a half inches wide or less except for this one that is three inches that says my weekend is booked we have that one and then I also did a couple of them as like sheets on their own because I felt like it might be something that you want to use more often in your planner. So I have my weekend is booked and it's just in black so that it will match any layout that you want to use and I love it because it's like really like short so it doesn't take up a bunch of room in your planner and then I also have these that have weekend plans and then it's a little book stack a bed and a tv because I felt like oh, those are my perfect weekends and they might be your perfect weekends as well so I haven't at the time of filming this video actually worked on doing some die cuts but I always do some die cuts of some of the exclusive elements in the kits and then also um, whenever I do like quote type things I'll do die cuts of the quotes so if you see any on this sheet that you want in die cut form let me know in the comments below and I will probably be doing that tomorrow when this video is live so yeah 
Finally, the last thing I want to show you is the last thing that I had requested. So basically, I had a few requests to do some book icons that kind of had themed covers for genres. So I did like 12 of them, I think. So we have this little cauldron. So you could use that for like a fantasy with magic or like a witch paranormal type of story. We have this wolf howling at the moon. So obviously like a werewolves or wolf shifters or whatever. We have these little magnifying glasses with a question mark. So mysteries or whatever applies. We have some romance options. Okay, good. They are all next to each other. So we have a few different options. We have the heterosexual romance options. So all of them kind of have a heart with a silhouette in front of them. And then we have the female and female option. And then we have the male and male option. So we have three options for romance. We have the these little vampire ones that you probably saw already, but obviously you can use it for a vampire story, a paranormal romance, whatever. We have these little castle ones that you could use for fantasy stories. We have this UFO one that you could use for sci-fi. We have these little knife covered in blood ones so that you could use it for a murder mystery or a slasher or a thriller or whatever. We have these that have microscopes on them because I figured you could use this for a like medical thriller or maybe a sci-fi that has to do with something medical like a virus um so like a dystopian or something like that i figured that one would be a good one for that and then we have these that have the little movie film reels on them so you can use them for movie and tv adaptations so we are done looking at stickers. So I'm sorry this video ended up being really long. If you stayed here for all of it, then thumbs up and kudos to you. Thank you so much for staying for all of it. Please comment down below. Let me know what your favorite thing is or what you plan to pick up or what books you plan to read or whatever. Comments really help me stay motivated to film videos, so I really appreciate your comments. Um, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will put up a video soon, hopefully, that is not related to a shop release, but anyway, because I definitely like to share other content with you guys. And I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys in the Facebook group this weekend and on Instagram. So I'll talk to you there. Bye.